Good morning, and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. I invite you to join us as we ask God to bless our lives, and please remember in your prayers the following people. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the fourth Sunday of Lent. We are approaching the festivities of our salvation, and we rejoice with the whole church for the gift of salvation. Today we also are grateful to the Lord for the gift of His forgiveness that He's asking us to share with one another. Let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal, on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover. On the evening of the 14th of the month, on the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day, after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, 
the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yields of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the mystery of ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. 
tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend his, the swine and he longed to eat his fill of the pots on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property, prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I guess that some of us could recite the parable of today's Gospel almost word for word. Right? It is so famous, so well known so full of meaning. When we think of God's forgiveness, we can imagine the father of this parable looking out across the fields, longing, praying, and waiting for his son to return. That is, waiting for each one of us to return to his heart. We can see here God embracing us, calling out to the servants to put a ring on our finger and get us a new garment to wear out of His fatherly love. As we contemplate with gratitude during this season of Lent how God's love, compassion, and mercy are faithful and always present, we should remember that our Lord is not concerned with the hurt He feels when we reject Him. He is concerned only about us, how we are hurting ourselves when we walk away from Him. When we think of our sinfulness and picture the son who offended his father, we remember how sin 
throws us in the mire with the pigs. We remember how we have hurt ourselves as well as others. Yet we know that we can have the resolution to get out of the mud, turn back home, and say to God, I am sorry. As with today's Gospel reading, our loving Father will forgive us before we even finish telling Him our sad story. Although for many years the focus of the parable has been on the offending, ungrateful Son, more recently the focus of the parable has been on God's mercy and forgiveness. Today's story is now often referred as to the parable of the forgiving Father. For some of you, coming from an age when God was portrayed as a dreadful judge, this is a beneficial and necessary insight into the parable. And in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, we priests most often highlight how much God loves the penitent and expresses His unconditional love through forgiveness. Now, I have always uh, found the third character in the parable for the Sunday very thought-provoking. The elder son is a character we all tend to identify and with whom we are drawn to agree. He is angry and resentful because even though his ungrateful brother had committed atrocious offenses, the good father throws a party upon his return. I have told for you for years, the elder son says to the father, you never had a party for me. And well, we all have the inclination to say that this son is right. Therefore, in his mercy for the prodigal, it would seem that the father did not treat the elder son justly. But let's look at the parable a bit more closely. No doubt that the younger son was a real, self-centered, spoiled brat. In those times, farmers' sons were expected to work the farm with their fathers until their father's death. This custom was ancient social security, but the prodigal son was not into that at all. He shunned his responsibility to his father by squandering his portion of the property. Furthermore, to the ancient Jews, property was sacred. Their family's portion of the chosen land, a gift from God. To keep the land and cultivate it was considered a religious duty a faithful man was obliged to observe. However, the younger son couldn't care about anyone or anything except himself. He had insulted his father, his God, and his whole family. Therefore, it is clear that the elder son has reason to be upset. He did the right thing in his life. He worked this portion of the inheritance, two-thirds of the property, for his father. He suffered, putting up with his brother's insulting of their father. And as you will know, nothing gets us angrier than when one of our loved ones is offended. The elder son has caused to be angry with his brother. However, he himself is mistaken for letting this anger control him. A lovely banquet is celebrated, but the elder son refuses to join. The offended father has already forgiven the prodigal, but the elder son refuses to forgive. Now, in the Bible, a banquet symbolizes the intimate sharing of God's life. The prophet Isaiah says that God will love His people so much that He will set a banquet for them and bring them into the closeness of His presence. So here, the elder son separates himself from his father's love and he damages his relationship with God because he refuses to forgive his brother. We separate ourselves from the intimacy of God's love when we refuse to forgive those who have sinned against others or us. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we all have battle stories, right? We have all had people who have tried deliberately and heartlessly to hurt us. I have been offended, and so have you. Nevertheless, if we do not forgive those who have hurt us, we will be keeping ourselves out of the banquet of God's intimacy, far from having a close relationship with them. 
Today we're called to remember that we have to give God's forgiveness if we want to receive God's forgiveness and love. If we don't, we stand outside the banquet, whining and complaining, but separating ourselves from God's love. At the conclusion of the parable, only the elder son is excluded from the celebration, and he does this to himself. So today and always, let us pray that we might be like the forgiving father, not like the elder son. We pray that we may live the words we say when we pray the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. And now let us profess our faith in God and in His Holy Church. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we should pour forth prayers at all times, but above all in these days of Lent, we should watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more firmly to God our Father. For our Holy Father Pope Francis, Archbishop Blair, and all of our Connecticut bishops, May we surround them with the support of our love and prayers that they will feel strengthened to continue their special mission of care and concern for the church and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the body of Christ, may she continue as Christ's ambassador through the sacrament of reconciliation to preach the love of God, our Father, who forgives the repentant sinner. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our communities and families, may we, be, we, may we, by our example of love and forgiveness, help the more lukewarm of our families to see in us and our attitude to them, a reflection of God's loving mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those displaced and killed during this Russia-Ukrainian war, may the displaced find healing amidst a war-torn existence and may the dead find eternal peace and rest with our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who support this televised Mass through their prayers, voluntary service, and financial contributions, may they experience the richness of God's kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in the vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially here in the Archdiocese of Hartford, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community with special intentions, Bob and Marilyn Archambault, for all registered voters, and Grace Zonin and Savick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased friends and relatives, Elizabeth A. McCormick, Philomena Pamar Pamarchio, Ellen and Charles Bucard, Raymond F. Walsh, Robert and Loretta Hopko, Stella, Michael, and Nellie Jacobs, the Baldino family, the Drash family, the Sicaria family, and Thomas Lapotsky. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, Heavenly Father, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, 
they may receive by your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of His holy Church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spare us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never do you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus, Sunt celi et terra gloria tua, usana in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini, usana in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. 
Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself to the, by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, my brother Leonard our Bishop, and me your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, who humbly we commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, glory yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good night. So
of love. 